Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4, where we're going to start texturing our guy. So, let's set up the scene of Open Substance Painter. We're going to go File, New. Just a default template, I'll work in 2K. Even though I will export 4K, it'll uprise later. I choose OpenGL, because that's Marmoset that we baked in as default. Normal orientation. Uh, select our low poly mesh. Uh, import baked maps that we baked in uh, all of these guys in Marmoset. Um, that's it. Okay. Right, so let's set up. Your layout will be different, but everything is available to you. So, first we want to uh, plug in the normal map. Or we might be quicker to just click that. World space normals. ID map will be our object map. Object ID, uh, AO, curvature, position, thickness, don't need the rest. I'm going to add scattering as well, so we have some subsurface scattering. Um, ah, that will come in nicely. Okay, so let's set up subsurface first of all. Um, we have to do that in three places. So the first place was adding the scattering map. Secondly is you have to say uh, activate SSS. And the third place is, well, it's already enabled. You won't see it yet. I'm going to put it to skin. To keep it to scale, we, we're going to adjust that later. Um... I like to work in Unreal or Aces color. Even though I don't render in Unreal, I do like the Aces color space. So I'm gonna. You don't have to do this. It's not essential at all. But I usually have this set up. Uh, log. And then I've downloaded this lot from Gumroad. Forgot the name. I'll put it at the link in the description. But it is not necessary. I just like to work in the ACES color space. ACES 2.1.2, 2, I think. Can't remember. I do not work with these on, especially color correction, because then you're working the wrong color space. This is nice. Can slow things down sometimes. And I like using either uh, Studio 3 or Studio Tomoko, because they're the most neutral. And sometimes, you know, I would check them in the others, because you're not always going to have neutral lighting. So, but the bulk of my work is done, and, and most of the people I know and work with uses the same. Oh yeah, I hate working without shadows. But I don't like black shadows, because you rarely get black shadows in real life. There we go. Bit dark for me. Keep them lightweight. Uh, the rest can stay as is. Just double checking everything. Yeah, working low. Okay, so let's set up subsurface. Go to our layers. Delete. New layer. Alt and tap this one will deselect everything except the one you've tapped on. So I just want my base layer to be color, roughness, and metal. No metal, medium roughness, color, whatever. Let's make it gray. And I want a dedicated uh, scattering layer. Uh, you can just drag it, the thickness into the scattering. But you don't have any control over, over it, so it's better to add a black mask and a fill layer with levels above it. The levels you'll use to control the intensity of it. Then your fill, chuck in your... There we go. Oh yeah, and of course scattering in your main layer should be at 1. And now here we control with levels, we can control this is just to uh, have some SSS while we work. Uh, one c could export 
when we've done a subsurface map, of course. So we'll keep adjusting this as we go. Let's just have it like so for now. All right. So I paused the video and browsed for some of the smart materials I often reuse. I've turned them all off. Um, so let's. And I can't. I don't reinvent the wheel every time I skull. I, I texture a creature. I get a base and then I build on that. Uh, so I can't actually remember exactly how each one is constructed, but let's go through it together. Uh, so subsurface is still at the top. It's very subtle. Let's turn this on. There's a black mask on this smart material. Let's turn off all these layers. Well, let's, start, let's keep them on. And let's see what happens when we just chuck it all on here. I'm pressing 4. I'm turning on mesh. Zooming out, just chucking it on all of that. Ah. It's not a bad smart material. Nice earthy tones. So let's see how we got to this and then we'll manually paint. Because I manually paint. I do a lot of manual painting. It's not just smart materials chucked on and Bob's my uncle. Not at all. Uh, so I'm going to undo. Well, actually, we can redo that. Uh. Turn them off one by one. You can just drag to see what they all do. So the base layer is all this crap. I don't actually need opacity for this project because there's no alpha cards, hair cards, stuff like that. Emissive, maybe for the eyes, probably not. I'm going to get rid of emissive actually. Turn it on if we need it. The rest can stay. My base is just a base color. Height to establish neutral height. Roughness is slightly shiny. No metallicity and scattering is probably oh it does add. How do these guys play in concert, I wonder? Yeah, the top one's enough. I want to keep the base at uh, 0.5 just for now. So I do like the way it looks. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, fractal skin. So I, uh, I think this, but these bottom few layers was probably taken from... Yeah, I bet you, let's have a look. From this starter pack. Let's color it so we can see what it... So base, fractal, dot, top color. Yeah, I basically used a, a template and added my own stuff on top. Although I did a lot of tweaking. Uh, fractal... Skin. So this one is just color and roughness variation. If you press C, you cycle through these guys. Alright, that's cool. Uh, roughness cavity. I think this is where I yeah, make it really rough. If you press Alt on a mask, you can see exactly what it does. I think I added this one, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, just make it not shiny at all in the cavities. Pressing M goes back to default view, material view. It's all subtle. The key to getting good textures is lots of subtle layering and lots of manual painting and love. Right, um, how was this made? Fill layer with Curve layer chucked in, the curve baked map, and then with levels adjusted to taste. I would adjust that by pressing Alt to see just the mask and adjust it to, you know, using the mask as a guide. Then I would do it further here. But yeah, it's, it's very, very subtle, but it does matter in the end. 
dots. I don't think this does much at the moment at all. Press Alt. Okay. Does that. So, turn stuff bright yellow if you want to see what it does. Okay. Control Z to undo that. Turn uh, off. So very subtle. Okay. Let's keep that for now. Top color. Interesting. So this is... This set to normal. 75%. Just adding a, a hue, really. Yeah, let's keep it on for now, whatever. Because I don't have a plan for this guy. It's Usually when you're texturing in production, you'll have a concept art and you know what you're going for. And if you don't, it, well, whenever you're doing art, it's best to go from reference, which I'm not doing now. So what I'm doing is bad. You should always look at reference, look at animals, look at real world animals and people and people's skin that's you think might be interesting to emulate on this creature or character. Look at other artists work on art station as well. There's no harm in that. Look at everything. I use Pinterest mainly and a PRF sheet to gather reference, but I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to. Top color, uh, dark splotches. That looks cool. Let's see what that actually is. So this is, looks like a cloud. Well, wow, similar black and white spots. That's a procedural um, alpha. Well, not alpha. Um, we got a oh, we got a filter on. Let's turn that off. That'll be in procedurals. Yeah, one of these guys with just a fill layer added, and that dragged into the fill layer. Pressing M. And then what does it actually using that mask just as base color? So I'm gonna come back and adjust all the colors to what we want and so on. But for now, let's just see. What we have here. Okay. Purple washes. Now these three layers I added. They're just this is where I do some manual painting and there will probably be different colors now, so I'm gonna turn them off for now. AO. It's quite strong. What's going on here? It's just a color, it's multiplied, 38%. And yeah, just a fill layer. Again, one could have just chucked it into the base color, but then you have no control over it. So, matte black mask, fill layer, levels. Usually, you have to invert the levels. And then adjust to, to taste. Gives it a nice... Maybe a bit much. Keep it on for now. Let's see what happens if we make it... Do I do like that? I'm going to keep that. Uh, dots. This is something I... This is not the same dots. This is more manual painting, I believe. Let's see. No, I don't think it is. So this will probably have some height. Yeah. Subtle height. Let's make it more extreme. Just dots in the skin. There you go. Increase the tiling to 64. Well, that's not good. Often with things like this, it's easier to just come in and bloody well paint the dots yourself than screwing around with, like, paint. You know, exactly where you want them instead of screwing around the procedurals until it happens to, to suit what you want. Anyway, I'm not going to bother with dots for now. Splotches. More splotches, okay. Interesting. This adds another layer of subtlety. In the same tone family, almost. Perhaps we take this away. So this will be... 
I add paint layers when I want to manually remove stuff from a layer. So we'll get back to that. I'm going to delete this for now. Surface. Skin. What does this do? Some room in here. Normally I'd have all of this, this asset windows, uh, maximized on my second monitor, so I have a lovely, nice space, but then you wouldn't be able to see it. The surface skin. What is this? Height, roughness. I think I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah, let's kill it. Veins. This I might have added. I probably used plasma for veins. But I usually do. Oh no, I didn't add this one. Crystal. I would have used. So that's what it sells. Which would be uh, one of these guys. Add it to a fill layer. Levels probably inverted. And crystal. I'm going to get rid of them and show you how I normally do it. So add a fill layer. Plasma. Okay, so it's massive right now. Let's turn Alt, click on the mask. Uh, let's change the scale. Let's invert that with the levels. And sharpen it up. Yeah. M. So obviously it's way too much, but that's fine. We're just, we want it to be extreme so we can see what we're doing. Uh, I'll probably scale it back up a bit. Uh, we're just tiling. I want them to have large veins. Now let's take this layer and make it more... Oh, no, 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 what am I doing? Uh, this one. Because when you, when you adjust this value, it only adjusts base color or only height, depending which one you have selected here at a time. But when you adjust these values, the sub values, it adjusts everything. So it can be a bit confusing. So I tend to avoid sometimes adjusting that. But in this case, it's just why well, scattering as well. I'm just going to use color. In this case, it doesn't matter because I only have color on. So it's fine if I adjust that one. So let's make it real subtle and dial it back. And then I would definitely come in, um, add paint. And not have it so perfectly uniform, paint it out here and there. Or uh, we can add another, like a curvature mask to have it only appear like in the center or a thickness mask and so on. But we'll get back to that. Scattering. It's probably got the thickness plugged in here, yeah. For layer thickness levels. So this is like a fake subsurface scattering, actually just done with color. Which works nicely. I'm gonna keep it on. Sharpen. Mm, I don't want that. Oh, just a little bit. Okay. That's what's in my generic skin smart material, which is the same as Painter Starter Assets 1, but mine's modified with like a handful of extra layers. And I'll get back to those. I just want to block everything out. 
So, skin, let's turn on bone. I think this is from... So this is a material node. Let's have a look. Turn off this filter. Materials does it exist in the default bone. No, it means I downloaded it from um, Adobe Source, whatever the hell it's called. So let's press 4. In fact, let's show you how to use the ob object mask we had. We can use the um, color selection. You don't have to, but it's convenient. So now one can pick a color. So remember the clown map? Whoops, we baked. The group ID map, which is, our, is essentially our, cloud, our ID mask. We pick a color and we say we want these purple guys to be bone. An alternative way would have been to simply um, press 4 to fill, and then you just... Takes a little bit longer, but... Whatever. Color selection, pick color. You can add um, another one. And so on. SSS is way too strong over there. Remember it wasn't the base. I should probably turn that off. So somewhere else we're getting SSS from. Maybe it's in here. No. And skin. No. It's not affecting it. I don't know why. Well, it is. It's just a scale. There we go. Okay, we have that blocked out. Uh, bone. I'm going to leave it like that. I just, again, blocking that out. Tendons. Human blood. I think I downloaded this as well. Modified. Flesh. Similar zombie bloody meat. Yeah, that's downloaded from Adobe. And this one is downloaded as well. Just similar copy. Uh, emissive. I'm not going to make his eyes emissive or anything. So get rid of that. Ayo gives it an extra punch if you want that. Uh, we're not meant to do that, but I like doing it. And if it looks good, do it. So this is just a fill layer with the Ayo baked map plugged in levels, inverted, and then adjusted to taste on a, a color that's multiplied 39%. We can give it a... You can make it normal. Which is, we get some cool effects going. I already like that. So basically, at the moment, I'm just playing around. I don't have a clear, I don't have a plan at all. Just seeing, oh, that looks cool, that looks cool. That's, if it, again, if it was a production, it would be more focused, the path that I'm on. But because I'm just playing around with the creature and having fun, I just see what looks cool to my eye and go with it and later on I render it and move on and, f and forget about it yeah I'm gonna because I I knew from I didn't know one thing man I do want to go with a sort of very blackened not very colorful look so let's go back to bone let's add a uh, Paint. So I want to add these guys. Press. 
I think L is symmetry in Painter. I forgot, or is it X as well? No, it is L, the letter L for Lilith. All right. I'm using my mouse at the moment. As soon as it gets to proper painting, then I'll switch to uh, the Wacom. And El Hufo. So let's turn into polygons and do it like this. Let me undo that. L for symmetry. You know what? That's not working for me. I'm just going to paint it manually. Much less hassle. I love the texturing process. It's my probably my favorite part of the whole uh, pipeline. Oh, cool! I didn't have symmetry on. Yeah, it's just uh, really cool seeing it, giving it its first real stage of life. The final one being when it's animated. That gives me such a kick. Seeing stuff that shouldn't or doesn't exist move convincingly and render it in a proper ray traced environment uh, engine like redshift yeah it's not going to be perfect so we have our guy blocked out it's going to save okay I just want to add a Curve, curvature layer over everything and see how that goes give it a little bit more uh, depth uh, fill layer just color add a black mask add a generator and a mask editor okay we just want curvature here and I want to invert that And you could have done this just with your curvature map, a fill layer, and levels inverted. Uh, but you've got nice controls here, so could use this too. Let's play around with them. Uh, let's just get the color I want first. Uh, I want a kind of reddish. Well, I think I want a reddish. Yeah, I do. And I probably want to set this to overlay, because I like using overlay, generally. Now it's too dark to just lighten this up. Because if it's set to normal, it's just one color over everything where this interacts with all the colors underneath. Giving more subtle variations. So that's cool, but it's, it's too strong, which is fine. We'll just turn the master down. And then dial it slowly back in. Very subtle. Oh yeah, when I paused, I turned it from... Uh, 2k to, to 4k the working which slows things down but this card the 4070 ti seems to be all right with it so this resolution is not bad for one very bad uv layout just one map it's really not bad unless you're doing ultra close-ups which i rarely do it's not bad at all for really rushed uvs no mirroring at all and one map Okay, let's go back to layers. Uh, what do we want to do next? So, now that I've got... This is the base that I tend to work from. Now I will add more contrast on a global level. And I mean contrast in the... I mean contrast in where dark and light and so on. So, I probably want to make his face lighter, his chest. Similar to how I poly painted in ZBrush and Grey Tone and these parts of his arms. So I'm just thinking I could, whoops, use one of these layers I have. It's just a 
layer with color. I'm not going to use purple, but black mask and I add a paint layer. Because if you you can paint directly on the black mask, but you have more control if you have a paint layer. Much more control. You can have multiple paint layers. You can name them, so you know which what each one does and turn them on and off and. Uh, have uh, filters affect those paint layers above them, where if, it's, if you paint it directly in the mask, you can't do that. Well, you could group the, the whole fill layer and then apply effects to that, but why do you want to do that? It's just a little bit more efficient. Okay, so I'm going to choose... I really like using... Let's go to... All libraries, I'm going to search for wash. Wash brush. Getting my Wacom pen out. Pressing L. So over here... You can turn this line off because I can't stand it. I always turn it off. And I can see with the cursor on the other side. If it's on or not. Yeah, I'm gonna start with the chest. So that's too dark, but it's fine. I'm just laying quickly laying things down. Oh, it's set to multiply. Interesting. I wanted to Let's play around. And I want some reddish tones. So again, this is blocking this out. And I'm painting on the paint layer. And I frequently unpaint. Paint out what I painted in. Broad strokes. Really do something about those eyes. Let's fix that. Um, I'm gonna go out at the very top, add a fill layer, group it, eyes, base, color of this metal. Uh, black mask on the group. Pressing full mesh. That's better. Uh, let's make it slightly pink. So I'll get back to that later. I don't know how I'm going to approach the eyes yet. Close that. Hmm. So many routes one can go. So I like I like this. I like that. This actually works better. So I suddenly have this cold tone contrast. I'm gonna turn that off just for now. Make things easier. And continue with this path. Uh, so the rear I want. Darker, but definitely not as just as one color. So let's go to let's add some more broad stroke washes. Just a color fill layer. I've already got a paint layer in there. Oh, let's kill that. Add a new one. And that happens to be a green that I like. But let's 
Actually, no. Let's have some some more dynamic look. So let's go with green and see. Where we can make it look cool. And do that. Some washes here and there, but it's not all the same tone. Okay, that's enough of that. Very subtle. Play around with this guy. Ah, uh, yeah, so I just want to lighten with this, and I'll set this to screen. Let's try a uh, linear dodge. Actually, I want to darken that up in a bit. Definitely want to put more focus on his face, so let's lighten it up. And the cool thing is, I'm painting underneath like layers like these, so you don't have to, but I like it. I mean, ideally you paint with uh, base color, first get this nailed you don't have to but this is a very good way to work but i don't like doing that um right Whoops, I meant to paint that out a bit. Hmm. Let's have a quick peek in a different land i mean hdri aroma i really like bus garage traces warm light <laughs> okay uh stop playing around studio three it's also a good fairly neutral light setup and back to tomoko I want to, uh, I want to get back to everything, so I'm just still blocking in. So I want to integrate the fingers and those spikes and uh, to the body more, because it's very separate looking. So let's do that. Uh, skin, bone. I'm going to add a layer on top here for now. I'm not going to call it anything yet, because frankly, my brain just hit a blank. Uh, and a black mask, going to fill layer. Um, just color for now. I'm just thinking, should I add? Oh no, I'm going to do it completely manually. It'll just be easier. I'm going to adjust this tone later. It's Yeah, that's what I want pretty much for now. Symmetry on? Yes, it is. So either. Nah, I want to go this side.
don't want that. But it's already an improvement. Bit stronger. Yeah. Do the same with these guys. Often when I paint, I go too far on purpose, like paint in and in, in and then I press X to, you know, paint in black and then I ease it out. That's, I find it's easier that way to get what you want. Charge in, ease out. Charge in, ease out. It's a back and forth. Usually I would, in, pro in proper production, I would texture something two days. Because you get everything done on the first day, easily. Especially with, if you have sp presets you reuse all the time. The thing is your eyes. Just like when you're doing music production, you, you get ear fatigue and eventually you th what you're hearing is not really what is going on. Because you've been overexposed to, to a certain sound and frequencies over a too long a period of time. Same thing happens to your eyes with texturing. You need to take a break, go do something else. Freshen your eyes, really, put it simply. And then when you come back the next day or later that day, but usually the next day you go, oh man, that looks really wank. I need to change X, Y, or Z. Um, and then you just do that. It's not the sole reason it takes two days. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's one of them. I often make the lower legs a bit darker as well. Ooh, what's I say? One thing I've stopped doing is interrupting autosave, especially in ZBrush. Always let autosave do its thing, because that one time you need it and you don't have it is it's a sad moment. So with this, I'm not going to use this one, I'm going to use a separate. Uh, let's call this bone integration. If I can learn how to spell. All right, save. Right, so I want a bit more accents on the face. So I'm going to add a, another fill layer. Um, color, probably some dark red, uh, add a black mask, um, mm, generator, why not, mask editor, curvature, not going to invert it this time, it's what I want, but not as strong, obviously, um, let's tune it a bit, <clears throat> Not doing much at the moment, is it? Okay, there we go. Sharp, I definitely want sharp. I want fine. Uh, soft, not much. A little bit. What does this do? It's like a contrast. Yeah. Okay, um, what happens when I turn it off? I want to see how strong it is. It's really, let's add some levels. There should be levels down here. So, oh, I don't care. I want to look. And now I'm going to add paint. No, I'm going to group this. Add a black mask. So now there's... Now I can just add paint in where I actually want it. Which is great. 
where I want to that curvature. Use my pen. Set this to multiply. Too dark, that looks ridiculous. Oh, I set it to uh, overlay. Nah, I'll keep it normal. Change this. Over more orangey. No. Stay with red. Everything is quite slow because I'm at 4K. Like it's more saturated. There we go. Now I can paint in that accent wherever we want. Paint it out. Quite like it here on the edges. But not over the bone. We're going strong. Ease it back. And I can do this for hours because I love this process. And you know, there's so many th things that look cool. You can stop or, but you you often reach points where you think, oh, that looks good. That's good enough. And you realize, no, it can go way, way further. Push it and push it and push it. So it's what we're doing. Again, I'm just playing with this. It's not like a step-by-step -step how to texture Creature X or this. I'm not doing that. I'm just playing around showing you my process when I'm doing personal work. Production is a different story. So let me always... When I've done... Added something new, I always turn it off to see did that make it wetter or worse? And does that brush everything? And this... That didn't make it better, it just made it different. Uh, but I definitely want to paint it out. So it's not everywhere. I do like... We're getting more depth overall in our creature now, slowly. Yeah, yeah. Saving. I do, I do like that. Let's try... What does this AO do again? So that's clashing for me. Go a bit warmer. Less saturated. That works for me. That is nice. But I like it without it as well. Ah, choices. Choices, choices. Hmm. Even more subtle. Let's go for uh, 21. Let's keep it there for now. Really subtle. Subtlety is key. Before I started this video, I saw something that I want to have fun with. That's completely new to me. It's not mind blowing, but I did like it. Oh, what is this again? Uh, I want to na name stuff, by the way. Curve, red, accent. Um, it's projection of a texture. So let's... I probably want it just above these guys. New fill layer. This color. Uh, does it work? Actually, no. Let me undo that. Clear this. Your assets. These are just pictures from the internet I downloaded. You just drag it onto the model. Base color. It's meant to 
meant to be able to move. Ah, there we go. So that is pretty cool. And then you can scale it up. Because so I often, not always, mix in textures subtly with other textures to create even more depth. So this is brand new to me, so I'm going to play around with this now. See what happens. Uh, okay. So let's set it to something like... What is cy cycle through? Down arrow. When in doubt, cycle. Overlay and screen is probably two ones I'll try. Ooh, what's this? Mm -hmm. Let's go. What was that one? Oh, soft light. Yeah. Alrighty, and now we turn it down. And we move it. Uh, we got all those lovely curvature layers and so on above it. Uh, Q to act Q is activating the gizmo, and then you can press W, E, and R to go from transpose, rotate, scale. So I might not use this. I just wanted to check it out. Do like it on the face. Interesting. And then one can, you know, you can add a white or black mask. If you add a white mask, and we paint out. It's a load of shit, really. I mean, it's a cool technique to use this, but at the moment, this is not what I want. But I just thought I'd check it out. Uh, where is it? It's over here. Let's just see what the screen looks like. I think I do, don't want it too dark. And then really subtle. Can we replace? Okay, yeah, let's try other textures. Huh. Cool. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. It is useful, as you can see. It just adds. Just, these are organs from online. Um, cool variation, and you can make it really subtle, like fifteen or whatever. And then let's go back to multiply. No, I see it'll be too dark. Overlay. That's super subtle now. Yeah, screen in this case is what I prefer. I want to lighten. And then feather it out. And I'm probably not going to use this. But I do want to check it out. Hmm. So it adds overall variation very easily and cheaply without... Let's have it on for now. We can always come back and delete it. Right, saving. Right, let's work on the face a bit. I want to add um, some bloody kind of stuff. Shiny blood aspects. This is default organic flesh. Let's see what that works like. Very red. Um, add a black mask. Add a paint layer. Let's see what happens. Let me... I want to integrate the teeth a bit. They're coming strong. Mm 
Made the gums as well. Why the hell not? Um, C. You buy his color. Normally, I would have a second mesh in the scene with just the head with the mouth open. With the same UVs, of course, so I can easily paint inside. Ah, this is fine. Come in strong, but I'm going to pull back in a sec. We'll dial that back. Turn off symmetry. It's going here. Why not? Symmetry back on. What happened if I added there? I don't think I want to do that, but I just want to do a wash. Yeah. No. Get rid of that. Okay, so now I want to play around with this. Desaturate it. That's better. Yeah, it's fine. So, what does it actually do? Probably the scale is off, so we can't see it. So let's make it 32. All right, let's dial it back. Ah, there we go. So one is like so, two, I'm going to go with two, just see where this guy is. I got to wait because it's in 4K. You know what, I'm happy with what it was. Okay. Zoom out, pressing F. Too shiny. Go back to where it was, but let's paint some of it out. <clears throat> now I want to try adding it in here, because why not? Try some over here. Dial it back. Turn it off. Back to that, I want to add some patterning to the skin now. 
Uh, so I've added a fill layer. Just color. Set it to linear dodge. Black mask. And turn it down a bit. And let's add a fill. So we have control over whatever we add. I want to play around with the procedural... Map. I think... Yeah, I, I like using this one. I'm going to chuck these marble veins in there. And that is pretty much what I'm looking for. As the primary patterning. We can have multiple layers of these, you know. But let's see how it goes. Uh, so the cool thing, again, because we have the fill layer, we have control over the scale, rotation, and so on. I think... This does it for me, really. Lucky. Lucky uh, first time. Right, now we want to establish where we don't want it. So I'm going to add a paint layer. Uh, add paint. And then paint out where we don't want it. Um, oh, I've got a silly brush from earlier. Uh, let me just get the basic soft. Oops, I, I went way too far. It actually looks kind of good everywhere, weirdly. I'm going to get definitely not on the teeth or there. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it. Well, uh, get it off of the nails. Let's go into this mode again. Get the tablet pen out. So like, funny enough, you know, very weirdly, by default, size is set to pen sensitivity instead of flow. Adobe should really change that. That's weird. Size sensitivity, of course, has loads of uses, but most people usually want flow more often than size. Anyway, minor nitpick. It's not the end of the world. In fact, it's a first world problem. So I really like what this marbling is doing. Not on the ass. Not on the underside of the palms. And why am I making these choices? Just got... Just thinking, yeah, that's what I... Yeah. No real reason. It's just artistic choice. And I just happened to paint this by accident and I actually... No, I don't like that. What the hell am I doing? I'm gonna... Make the flow down. Whoops. Paint that out just a little bit. Before I forget, I just happened to notice this. Uh, where's our fleshy McFlesh? Yes. And dial it back. Very light. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I meant to go back. Yeah, that's better. Do the same here. And dial it back. That's too much. And I just want to see what it looks like if we turn... Yeah, I'm going to turn this bit into like a membrane. Just to see what it looks like. And then we'll get back to the skin patterning. I wonder if my mic picked up that dog in the background. So it's barking at me, one of my cats. No, this won't work as membrane, but that will. Uh, let's go to good old. 
It also turns shadows off, but I don't want to. Turn this into membrane too. Yeah. That may not work actually. We can do it subtly, so just bang it out a bit. Uh, that's not working for me. That's okay. Right, back to the marbling uh, sky. Paint it out so it's not everywhere. Yeah, I'm going to paint it out from there. And break it up a bit. Symmetry off. No, I don't want to interrupt it too much. Let's turn this down. Yeah, 40 is better. Or is it? Was it? That's the worst way to type. So you have to click on that and then click on that to type. And wank. Um, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay, so I want to accentuate the overall curvature on his face a bit. So let us add yet another one. Uh, just color, black mask. Um, add a fill. I'm not going to use a generator because I feel like using um, D-Man. Huh. Project. There we go. Um, curve layer. Levels. Simple. Easy. Sometimes working with a mask editor is too many controls for me to quickly get what I want. Where this is pretty immediate. Uh, what does the inverse do? Always good to know. Great. Okay, let's dial in the color. I'm not sure if... I think I want it darker, actually. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I saw something there. Not that. Oh, blue. Closer to what I want. I want to go with that. Play around. No, don't want to soften that. Definitely not. Do because I'm gonna make a copy of this. <clears throat> I think that's the one I want. Yeah, it's an accent, really. Probably just for the face. Oh, the whole body. Hmm. Okay, so that's why I don't. I want it to be way more contrasted. I don't want that grey. I want to clamp it. Essentially. 
Because I don't want this purple wash over the whole thing. Just... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Curve accent A. Copy this layer. B. Terra. Oh, not the same, so what? I'm going to make this different hue. And do that inverse. Clamp it again. Uh, it's easier to do it here. Okay, now let's just make it less less harsh. Okay, now let's turn it down. Yep, that's what I want. Save. Okay, so we got this curve. Now we need to get again lighten some aspects of the face. So let's delete this embarrassing folder from earlier. Like a raw skull, I quite like that. So this needs a bit more accentuation, lightening. Okay, I've made a few adjustments in the meantime since I recorded it last time. I removed that and there's more contrast I added a overlay dark layer here just to give some vulture like awfulness there but not too shiny just yeah I really like that maybe actually turn it back a bit on the edges yeah there we go. And I also toned down this guy. Because I I realized it was washing out everything with red. It was way stronger than this. It was not that strong, but it was too strong, so I didn't like it completely gone, although I do like the higher contrast of color, colors and tones, but a bit of that, maybe take it down a little bit more. Yeah. Where was it? Mm, that's all fine. Now I would like to work on the teeth, sharpen them up. And then we'll go from there. Right, I'm back. Uh, so in the meantime, I adjusted a few things. I um, added this curvature map. So I just, I just didn't feel that alone. So I wanted some sharp and lighter edges. So I created a base color fill layer. Fill with my uh, baked curve map in there. Levels to uh, tone it down, blur it out a bit with a filter and another filter warp, just give it some slight variation. And it's, it's quite strong, but I, I like it. So there it is. 
Um, and I might have... I toned down the shininess of... This blood. Hang on. No wonder this is so shiny. I don't want that. So that render is yesterday, which I posted on Instagram. And I wondered why is it so very shiny in some areas? Because it's subtly here. Now I know. Do so just a little bit. Yeah, so all that's doing there is adding shine, not color really, which I don't want. Well, let's check it. Pressing C. Yeah, a bit of a wash, but that shininess was not good. Whoops. And I also reduced the uh, shininess of the of the base color, of the very base, just to tone it down a bit. We want to leave it there. Let's look at the roughness. Yeah, it'll do. Uh, what else? I also experimented with adding a this darker, which is, you know, a cool variation. Really dark, if I wanted to. <clears throat> and I think I see any other stuff I did in the meantime. Let's close skin. I want to work on the eye, so I went on Pinterest and typed in lizard eye, and I found, uh, well, this guy. And I'm going to project that onto his eye. So... Base color. Q. And then R. Or scale. Rotate it. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. Way smaller. Just drag this into our eyes folder. That's better. So the pick does have um, shine, which is not ideal. You want a neutral base color pick, but this is just rough texturing. So we don't care. We do what we want. Yeah, almost fixed. Um, What will happen if I do this? Ah! So it's... You can't work symmetrically when warp projecting like I just did. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. So when I get back in Maya, I'll just mirror the this eye over to that side. Because I want them to be identical anyway. And I'll have another sphere around this one and I'll clean this up a bit. The mesh. But I do like that. Color looks pretty cool. Let's uh, add a fill layer on top. Alt, turn off everything, put it to pass through, and add a filter. HS hue saturation. So everything underneath in this layer will be affected by this filter. I'm just going to look at the one side, because the other side does not have that lovely picture projected onto it. I don't want to stick with green, I really like... Well, maybe a bit warmer. So warmer is this way. See the difference? It's slightly... Maybe not. 
Just like that. I'll let's keep it uh, 0 0.5. Yeah, it's neutral. Yeah, it's fine. Control S to save that. And Control Shift E is to export. Already chosen my folder. Yeah. Targa, just straight up pure metallic roughness at 4K. Yeah. So next, we'll plug these into Maya and do some renders. So I'm back in Maya now. I've exported my textures and I've applied to this whole group a uh, new material. I chose a Redshift standard, which is uh, just color. Just plug in the color. I changed uh, BRDF to GGX uh, for an L type to metalness. I didn't even plug in the metalness map because nothing is metal, just kept it at zero. Roughness, plug in the roughness map. And after you plug it in, you need to change it to raw every time. I don't know why, but it's, yeah, it needs to be raw. Um, and then overall would be your bump map. And then when you click that first time, you when you click this the first time, it'll ask you what kind of node. You have to choose Redshift Bump Map, specifically. And then we'll load this thing, and then uh, you have to change it from height to tangent, and change this from 0 0.1 to 1. And just plug in your normal, and then change it to raw as well. I said flip normal on the Y, because in Painter, let's look at the exports. So I was exporting the preset. PBR metallic roughness, and as you can see, it's exporting DirectX. I could have changed it and changed this preset to make it um, OpenGL, which is the normal orientation we baked in uh, Marmoset and the one that Redshift uses, but I know that Redshift Materials has this convenient button where it flips the green channel of the normal map, so I just click that. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I don't think there's any other maps. Subsurface, I might have plugged in the thickness map I or originally baked. I don't... You, you can paint a mask for scattering, but I didn't. Um, thickness map, set to raw, as usual. And this scale... All of this depends on how large your model is, because they're always the same. Your model needs to and it needs to be adjusted, but it looks all right uh, for for this quick demonstration. Um, I did not use this subsurface, but rather the. So this one has got layers. I haven't really played with that yet, nor am I knowledgeable enough to use them well. I will in the near future, but for now, I'm just going to go with very simple SSS. So last night, I rendered this. He's unintentionally very shiny. I only wanted the shine to be there and there, and I, that's why earlier I realized I had some of the blood very faintly painted on some areas where the color, the color didn't show up, but the roughness did. I think I've since fixed that. So I've opened my Redshift window. I'm just going to dock it here. Normally, it would be full screen on my other monitor, but then you guys won't be able to see what the hell's going on. Uh, so the material is really simple. I'm going to close this down now so we have more room. Uh, something is missing. That was missing. I wonder why. And do that. Do this. I think I was just blind. Now I can see. Yeah, it's disappeared again. Have I gone mad? No, I haven't. There it is. All right. Let's look at the new eyes, which wasn't in the render last night. There we go. 
again. I have no idea why that happened. I'm not going to go totally close up because this guy was not textured for extreme close ups. Definitely not. Doesn't have the fidelity. I mean, this is not bad for one texture set that's really badly packed. There's no. Because for, for, for non game or real time stuff like this, you can go crazy. You can make a texture set. And I would in the future do this for each arm a 4K texture set and have really crisp high fidelity, but. That's for another day. But it's, it's alright. And if this is going to be moving a lot with motion blur and so on, it'll be fine. So what do I have in my... I think I'm using one light at the moment. Let's see? Turn it off. Yeah, I'm just using one physical light. Over there. I've got some other lights in the scene from previous... Videos. Um, but they don't really work for me in, for this setup. This one's quite nice. Let me turn the floor back on behind them. But I've already played with this before I made the video, and I know I want just this one simple light. I've added some bit of fog in the redshift contribution. And is there still something else on? Oh, okay, yeah. There we go. I turn into aces. The view space. Lot. I just chose one I liked. This one. So I barely have, I only slightly up the contrast and color controls because the lookup table, the LUT, does did most of the lifting here. This did that. <laughs> I don't use Black Crush these days. I up the saturation a bit. I like how that looks. Usually I, I take the saturation down a bit, but with this one, I like the way it looked. Very tiny bit of bloom, I think. Not much. If you don't want to blow it out, that kind of does blow it out a bit, doesn't it? It's fine. It's fine for now. I don't use flare or streak normally. And bulky, I definitely always want to use. So this is using that autofocus... Why the f Okay, there's obviously a bug going on. Gonna happen again now? Yeah. No. Is isolate select on? Yeah, okay. I learned something new. This is this isolate selected. Okay. They didn't used to be there in previous versions, so that's really useful. That's great to know. Okay. Uh, there was a little cube where wherever it's, I snap it to, that's where my focus is. I also uh, copied these teeth and just wedged them in there because I wanted more, more teeth. And I copied the lower ones and copied them on the sides. Because I felt his, that focus area of his mouth needed tertiary almost detail. If in its local sphere of influence we, we consider the head primary, the teeth secondary, and then these smaller teeth tertiary in this particular case. I'm just wondering why the hell this little cube is showing up because it shouldn't. Because I, but never mind, I'm just going to hide it for now. Because normally I have it not show up in renderers. I should have just made it a locator. Really dumb of me, and not a cube when I set that up. Anyway, so I would render some renderers out and probably go in Photoshop and sharpen it up a bit. Not much. And uh, see how different this is. I definitely played with curves in Photoshop 
Well, I could have done it in, in Redshift directly in the uh, color control, I suppose. Let's see if we can match this. It won't be as shiny, which is good. That was just way too shiny, but I've removed that. This is way better. I want some, but not... Like that's almost... Not metallic, but it looks wrong. I wish Red Shift would add a sharpen. So I do love using sharpen. That really makes it pop, doesn't it? So I control click removes that. I'll just do that in Photoshop. Although if this was... No, I'll do it in Photoshop. I mean, if one's going to render a cinematic, you render them frame by frame. And you generally don't want any of these on. Maybe Bloom. And you want Bokeh on, Depth of Field. Maybe Bloom. Um, that's probably it. All this stuff you'd want to be able to adjust in Premiere. Whatever you composite in off, you know, afterwards and have control over that. Me, I usually just render with that on because I've committed to that look. I should probably stop doing that. But if it was professional work, I definitely wouldn't turn any of this on. Oh yeah, and I've added uh, two spheres. Outer eyes. And they just see they add that extra glint, which is vital for eyes. It's very subtle now, but it's it's there. And that's just a uh, redshift glass shader, I believe, slightly edited. Anything transparent and fully rough. I mean, fully not rough, black roughness. Running out of room here. And what else is there to discuss? So at this point, I would probably go and um, start rigging them up. And my rigs are terrible because they usually only four of the shot. They're really quick. And um, then I'd animate it because I love doing that. It's fun for me to see something come alive and turn on motion blur, render it out frame by frame and just... Enjoy that process. I might, I may record that next. I mean, I'm thinking I don't want to record me rigging it or even animating it because I don't want to teach bad habits. I've already shown bad enough habits with these dirty UVs, which you definitely don't want to do at a studio. Uh, but my rigging is definitely not something you want to learn. It's, it's really crude and just like built for me to quickly use and because of you know a lot of the stuff it's like normally you'd have a primary skeleton and then two copies of that skeleton one for fk one for ik and then you can switch between them and there's so many controls forearm twist i don't set any of that up sometimes i don't even set a foot roll up and if you don't set a foot roll up it's really hard to animate it planting its feet as it's running or walking or standing up. You can do it. And I all my previous animations, most of them, I was too lazy to set up a foot roll because I forgot how to do that. And it's easy enough to go learn it on YouTube in 10 minutes. Just type in foot roll. And then I can... But the way to animate without it, just with a normal skeleton, is to, count, to counter a key as the legs. And it's, it's a pain in the ass, actually, but I'm used to it. Um, and then animation, I, I come from an animation background, actually. I learned it long ago, like hand-drawn animation, cell by cell, like with a pen and paper. That was, that sucked. I'll be honest, it sucked. So much work for, and then you, I mean, you have a second's output and then you've worked your ass and it's good to work hard. One should work hard because then the payoff is much sweeter, but with hand-drawn animation, it's just too much work. That's it's just way over the line, for me personally. Some people love it. For me, nah, way too fucking much. 
I love 3D animation. It's just, yeah, so much control and undo and all that stuff. And it just, yeah. I quite like this guy. I'm um, looking forward to animate him. I may, I may, uh, take a throne from one of my dioramas and very quickly unwrap that and texture that for him to sit on or something. I think that'll be cool. I'm really happy with him. So yeah, if I wasn't going to do an animation next, I'll take him to Photoshop, just unsharpen mask once or twice. Maybe increase a vignette or just do it here. I do like a strong vignette sometimes. And brighten it up as we saw and yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to be next. I've never made so many videos, like almost one per day, except for yesterday. Before, and it's really taken away my... Because I only have so much time. And I need to make packs as well, because I need to release them. And I, I've got my studio job with Romero Games, which is, by the way, the best job I've ever had. It's, it's amazing. Um, and the project's amazing, and I can't talk about it, but it's, it's fucking amazing. Um... So I have that as my day job. And then usually I would work on packs in the evenings. Weekends would be music or sometimes a bit of packs. So I, there's simply not enough time to do everything. So I thought this week I'll do YouTube and then... Uh, probably going to jump to Demon Nest because I do want to release the whole thing. Make 40 arms, 40 torsos. 40 sets of legs for the Demon S pack to mirror the Demon male version pack. And I want to do that. Time is running out. I need to do that before Black Friday month, which is imminent. I probably won't make it just like last year where I didn't get Demon legs out in time. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to go edit this video now. Thank you very much for watching. Let's see how quickly this renders. Bam, isn't that beautiful? I'm used to it rendering really slowly on my other PC now. It's just gorgeous. Anyway, really thank you for watching. Uh, see you later.